Yeah, so if you're in the mood for just a fun balls to the walls action horror comedy, takes place in the future nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. Check out Split Second. It's a lot of fun. You do get to see uh, Kim Cattrall's boobs in this. It was a nice surprise. <laughs> That's right. Welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we're drinking Pinhead Porter. Nice. It'll tear your ass apart the next day. Yeah. Shit will all be black <laughs> and everything. Devoid of nutrients or anything. Today we're going to bring to you 1992's Split Second. This movie is directed by Tony Malum, and he also directed a great horror movie which we covered years back, yep. The Burning. This movie stars movie legend Rutger Hauer, sadly the late Rutger Hauer. Kim Cattrall is in this, the very beautiful Kim Cattrall. She was in one of our favorite movies ever, Big Trouble in Little China, and she was just coming off of Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country. You can tell by her hair, it's still black and cropped. She's still got the Vulcan cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Michael J. Pollard is in this, and he was in American Gothic, which we had covered, and that's got to be the first season when we did yeah. that. And he's in Star Trek, the original series. Tell him, Jim. <laughs> tell him, Jim. <laughs> tell him, Jim. I got the disease. <laughs> Split Second starts off with this establishing shot of, like, London. And it looks all dreary. It doesn't look yeah. like a happy London. Then this text pops on the screen and fills you in. It sets the scene for what's happening here. And the movie takes place in 2008. London has been affected by global warming and is flooded. Then we get introduced to our main character here, Harley Stone. <laughs> what a name for, like, the main character of an action movie. Sounds strong. Yeah. He shows up at this crazy, like, underground nightclub, you know, get a knock on the door to get in, and yeah. this dog is there, you know, <laughs> sniffing out people, and he all shows his ID, yeah. the cop dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's kind of scoping out the place, you're not sure why he's there, but it's a weird place, like, it's some weird kind of S&M type club with these women dancing with these leather masks on, Yeah, yeah. It seems kind of like a neat place, actually. <laughs> fucked up but neat. He goes to go use the payphone and he talks to this woman briefly. She wants him to watch the washroom to make sure no one walks in on her. He gets back on the payphone and hears screaming. Runs in and the bathroom is just covered in blood. It's like a slaughterhouse. Yeah. And yeah. her chest has been ripped open and her heart's missing. The cops show up to the scene of the crime and we find out some of the backstory of Harley Stone here. He was a cop but he was suspended because he kind of went off the rails after his partner was killed three years ago. Obsessed with finding the killer. He like lives off of cigarettes and <laughs> coffee cigars. and <laughs> cigars and chocolate and no sleep. <laughs> so he's like super paranoid and strung out all the time. <laughs> we find out that this is like the same M.O. as the killer that killed his partner years ago. He's still on the loose. Still on the loose. <laughs> So they put Harley back on the case and they issue him a new partner, Dick Durkin. <laughs> so like those two names together, Harley Stone and Dick Durkin. Like, <laughs> yeah. And he's like the polar opposite. Well-educated person who's got all these uh, diplomas and shit. And, yeah, wears suits yeah. and all that. Put in charge of making sure Harley doesn't go off the rails here. They're at the precinct and this cooler gets delivered attention to Harley Stone and they're all kind of joking ah you're getting the beer delivered at work you got a drink on the job and Harley has not touched a drink in years and yeah they pop open the cooler and it's the heart that was missing from the woman in the cooler with a big chunk taken out of it with teeth marks later they get the impression back from the teeth marks left in the heart and they show it to Harley and it's these big fucking Fangs. Yeah. <laughs> they actually get called to another murder that's happened. And again, it's just a fucking bloodbath. There's blood on the ceiling everywhere. Blood on the ceiling looks like an occult symbol of some kind. Dick actually starts to dig. <laughs> Dick does some digging. <laughs> finds some information out about this symbol and it turns out to be a Satanist kind of symbol. Harley actually takes a bit of a trip to the uh, necropolis where his partner is buried and he ends up running into his partner's wife. We learn that they have a little something going on. 
and they go back to Harley's apartment just in shambles. <laughs> like, there's all these things falling off the walls. It's all messy. There's all these birds flying yeah, around. pigeons everywhere. <laughs> he kind of falls asleep on the couch, and he gets flashbacks to his partner dying. He wakes up, and then he... Like, goes to drink all this coffee with all these butts in it and everything, and he all sips Cold in. coffee. <laughs> so Harley leaves the apartment to get back to work, and he actually hears screams. Runs in, knocks the door down, and he sees something shoot out for, for just a split second. And he has a shootout with this whatever it is. It ends up biting Michelle on the shoulder. Finds a woman dead in the bathtub and her heart's ripped out again. Dick Durkin has been attacked by the monster and the fucking monster just carves the shit out of him. <laughs> carves his chest all up with all these patterns and all these fucking symbols and everything. And it turns out to be a map that is pointing to a specific spot in the city. Harley and Dick actually go to this spot in the city and it turns out to be the entrance way to the sewers to go and try and hunt this monster down. The London Underground. Yeah, and that's where we're gonna end the story. So if you wanna see what happens with Harley and Dick and whoever or whatever they're trying to hunt down, Keep watching 1992 Split Second. But why should you watch Split Second? And we're gonna tell you right now. This movie is just tons and tons of fun. And it's riding that late 80s, early 90s wave of the buddy cop movie, right? Tango and Cash, Lethal Weapon, of course, Dead Heat. This is closer to Dead Heat <laughs> as far as being like a horror comedy. And this has more sci-fi elements too, so it's like a sci-fi horror comedy and it, yeah. it does a really good job of balancing all three of those. Rudger Hauer <laughs> as Harley Stone here. What a performance. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a very interesting performance. Well the character is so in weird, right? So he's like strung out off of caffeine and <laughs> chocolate and cigars. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't sleep. Paranoid too. So Rudger Hauer has like a lot to do in this. Yeah. Like, that's quite the character to play. A lot of depth. And he does a great job of doing it. And sometimes he does it like really serious. His killer is still around. Yeah, I don't know if I can get him. And then sometimes when he needs to camp it up for the comedy, he does. Hallelujah. He does that perfectly. Like you, you're not sure whether he's like method acting or he's taking the piss a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you kind of have to do both for this role. Yeah, the character is written very well, yeah. right? And also, the dynamic between him and Dick Dirk and his partners is perfect too. And the evolution of their relationship is pretty neat too. Like, yeah. it's a lot like To Live and Die in LA. Like, it mirrors that relationship a lot where Goody Two-Shoes Cop, near the end, starts to become the badass cop and yeah. like at the end Dick's got like the gun smoking like he's turning into Harley. We need more guns. We yeah. need bigger guns. Yeah, and I like that evolution, you know. <laughs> yeah. They kind of balance each other out like they each have something the other needs to make their life balance. Right. And they get it off each other. A little bit like Mulder and Scully a little bit where like Harley knows that there's this thing out there, right? He has that sort of connection. Yeah. He believes that there's this yeah you know, maybe not quite human thing that's hunting people. And it's sort of after him. But Dick kind of doesn't believe it until he sees it. Yeah, he's a skeptic. Yeah, yeah, he's the skeptic. He's like Scully. Yeah. Then once he does, then he's like, he's just off the fucking yeah, rails. And he's all in. Right? Yeah, they're all sharing that cigar, <laughs> too. The comedy in this is fantastic. And it's on purpose. It's not like yeah. you're laughing because it's bad or tacky. It's legitimately funny. There's yeah. funny scenes in this. A lot has to do with Rutger Hauer's character. Yeah. How bizarre of a character he is. Brushing his teeth and smoking at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's always super chewing on those cigars. Like, I'm surprised he just doesn't eat them. <laughs> it's like super intense all the time. Like, you always like manhandling everyone, like grabbing them by the lapels and Throwing yeah. him against the wall all the time. Tell that. Here's to you. Hey, 
Okay. I like when Dick, when he sort of changes his tune a little bit, he's like, we need bigger fucking guns. And then uh, Harley pulls the cigar out and he puts the cigar into Dick's mouth the wrong way. Yeah. <laughs> you hear the sizzle? Oh, yeah. <laughs> like stuff like that, you know, like Harley falls asleep in his apartment, he wakes up and there's a pigeon on his head. Yeah, yeah like, come on. Like little stuff like that. Excellent job of walking that line between comedy and horror, right? When it needs to get scary or tense, it does a perfect job at doing that. You get introduced to all these crime scenes and they're a bloodbath. And it really, like, you change gears right away, right? Yeah. Nothing steps on itself, which is fantastic. The killer itself is like a big mystery because you don't, you never see it. No, you only see it for a split second. Yeah, you see the impression of the teeth that it left. The rest is left up to your imagination just by what's left of the victims at the crime scene. Yeah. So they do a really good job of building the mystery of the killer and making it seem like super deadly without ever seeing it. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Without they, laying eyes on the thing. They build the myth yeah. through the movie, right? Until the end where you do finally see the thing and it, it is like, a, it's not human. And it like, it looks great. Like the yeah. design of that thing is fantastic. As they use the POV shots to follow the monster, you hear him breathing. Yeah. It's like, it makes it just so much more ominous. Like. What is that? Then at the end when you see it, you're still like, what is that? Yeah, like you don't you, you know. You don't know what this thing is. Like it does, it looks kind of human, but not really human. And you never really find out exactly what it is. Like they still kind of leave it a mystery till the end. Like they got ideas what it might be. Yeah. Something to do with Satan, you know? Like there's that great line like, Satan's in deep shit. <laughs> so you get the sense that it is evil and demonic, but you're not exactly sure what it is. I wouldn't say this thing thinks it's Satan. I say it is Satan. Well, Satan is a deep shit. The settings in this movie are really cool. The club that Harley goes to, that's really neat. His apartment is a character all in oh, itself. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the uh, underground where they go and hunt the monster. And the fact that they chose to make it in the future, and they chose to make it take place during global warming where there's a flood in London, nothing to do with the actual plot of the movie. Right. But it makes for a very unique setting that like it sets this movie apart from any other movie just because that's what they chose to do with the setting. Yeah, you could make the, the connection that, okay, well, if global warming's happening, maybe something has evolved yeah. down in the sewers or whatever, yeah. right? So this thing, it's plausible that it exists. And with Harley's apartment too, like it really represents what's in his head. Because <laughs> it's such a mess and it's scattered and there's shit every and it's almost unlivable. Yeah. And that totally reflects that character. I love when settings reflect what the character's about. And he's got these Harley Davidson posters <laughs> everywhere. His name is Harley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> he's yeah. all obsessed with Harley. Yeah. <laughs> Everything about this movie screams atmosphere and tone, right? Yeah. They do an excellent job. Again, it's they walk that perfect line of horror and comedy. The tone of this movie is the perfect horror side of it. And the showdown at the end of the movie with the monster is great. It yeah. like, takes place in the underground, in like these abandoned subway cars and stuff. It's super cool. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it actually, in my opinion, it could have been longer. Yeah. I could have done for a little bit longer of a showdown. <clears throat> yeah, so it's it's a pretty cool showdown. You get a pretty good payoff, though. Yeah. Throughout the whole movie, you're wondering what this thing is, and you finally learn yeah. exactly what it is and what it looks like. Yeah. It's a pretty badass fucking thing. And there's another payoff, too, where you finally get to see Rudger Hauer's character, Harley, and Dick become friends. You know? <laughs> yeah. like that's part of the payoff too. You know? That's right. Rather than Harley always punching him and yeah. then he all punches him in the face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some asshole. Right. And as a final note, you do get to see uh, Kim Cattrall's boobs in this, which is excellent. It was a nice surprise. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, so if you're in the mood for just a fun balls to the walls action horror comedy, it takes place in the future nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. Check out Split Second. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. You'll have a blast watching it. And you'll love the mystery too with it. Yeah. Right? Even though we wrecked it all for you, <laughs> but pretend 
We didn't. And until next time, keep drinking.